Okay, we're gonna look at another line integral problem. So we are asked to evaluate this line integral. We know it's a line integral because of the notation here along a curve, C. Uh, and we're integrating this one with respect to ds, so it's important that you pay attention to the differential that's here at the end. Sometimes we have dx or dy or ds. This one's ds. And we notice maybe here that we have a function of only two variables. And here is our curve that we're integrating over. It's really made up of three pieces here. A line segment, an arc of a circle, and another line segment. So the first thing that you would notice here is that this curve is not smooth. This is not a smooth curve. I can't write a smooth parameterization of this entire curve. But it is piecewise smooth. So I can break this into three pieces and evaluate the line integral over each piece. And remembering that this line integral is a sum of function values over the curve, essentially I'm just going to do a sum over each piece and then add my three pieces together, my answers for my three pieces together. So it doesn't really matter which one I do first, second, or third, I'm going to add them all up at the end here. I'm going to give these some labels though so that my work, you can see corresponding to which piece I'm going to work on. I'm going to go ahead and start with the arc of the circle, so I'm going to call that one C1, and then this line segment going from 0, 3 to 0, 0 would be C2, and then this last part here would be C3. So I'm going to have to split this into three separate problems. The other thing that I'm going to need for each of my problems here is a parameterization of that part of the curve. So for C1, we are along an arc of a circle, radius 3, centered at the origin. So this is one of those kind of standard parameterizations that you would have done in Calculus 2 when you worked with parametric equations. We've seen it repeatedly throughout this semester too when we did uh, curves in two-dimensional space or three-dimensional space earlier in the semester and looked at parametric equations for curves. So hopefully it's not too much of a stretch to remember that. Uh, the orientation here is counterclockwise, the same way you probably usually think about in trigonometry going around that unit circle. And so it's a pretty standard parameterization. The simplest parameterization for this circle would be to let x equals 3 cosine t and y equals 3 sine t. Uh, and then at t equals 0, then t is essentially acting like your angle theta when you think about going around the circle. And so at t equals 0, you would be here. And at t equals pi over 2, you would be up here at the top. There are other parameterizations for that part of that circle, pi over 2. There are other parameterizations for that part of that circle, but this is the simplest one, and this is also a smooth parameterization for that part of the circle. All right, so I'm going to do this essentially in three different problems along C1. So we're going to integrate from 0 to pi over 2. And then I'm going to integrate this function, but over this curve, so along that curve, x is given by 3 cosine t, x is given by 3 cosine t, so when I square that, I will have 9 cosine squared t, and y is given by 3 sine t, so when I square that, I will have 9 sine squared t plus 1. Uh, all right, our differential ds, I think I need a new marker here. Our differential ds, uh, remember that that's that arc length differential, so that is the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. So my dx dt will be the derivative of this x function with respect to t, so the derivative of that will be negative 3 sine t, so that's dx dt, the quantity squared, plus dy dt, so the derivative of this will be 3 cosine t, the quantity squared, and then dt. And that square radical right there, so my dt is not inside the radical. Okay, so now I need to evaluate this integral, which kind of looks like a mess, but hopefully at this point you recognize Pythagorean identity when you see it. We've been working with it pretty much all semester long. So maybe you look at this for a moment and say, oh wait, this simplifies beautifully and then you go ahead and do the simplification. 
Uh, I have Pythagorean identity here on the denominator, so I can factor 9 out of these two terms. And so I'm left with 9 times 1 plus 1. So this denominator all simplifies to just be 10. Uh, inside the radical here, I will have 9 sine squared t plus 9 cosine squared t. I can factor a 9 out of that. So I'll just be left with 9 times 1 inside the radical, since I have square root of 9. This all can be rewritten as square root of 9 or just 3. Uh, so I just have some constants I can pull outside of the integral and then go ahead and finish my integration here. Uh, so we will have 9 tenths times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine t dt. So that will be 9 tenths. And then uh, the integral of cosine t is sine t from 0 to pi over 2. Uh, when I put in pi over 2, I'll get 9 tenths times sine of pi over 2. Uh, so 9 tenths times 1. And then when I put in 0, I'll have 9 tenths times sine of 0 will be 0. So I just get 9 tenths. All right, so that is the total value of this function along this arc of the curve. Uh, and then I've got two more curves to do. All right, so uh, let's look at C2 here. So C2 is a line segment. Uh, I need a parameterization for that line segment. You might notice that x stays the same along that line segment. x stays 0. And y changes. y goes from 3 to 0. So one way to do that is using initial point and vector along the curve. Uh, I'm going to actually do that slightly differently. y equals negative 3t. And then t will go from negative 1 to 0 along that curve. So I did use a vector, um, but I, I didn't want a constant term there to deal with. So I just did 0 minus 3t. And then I had to think a little bit more about my t interval. But you can double check that when t is negative 1, I'm at the point 0, 3. And then when t grows to 0, I'm at this point here. So we've got that line segment there. OK, so I need to do my line integral along C2. So I'll integrate from negative 1 to 0. x along that curve, x is 0 over uh, 0 squared, which is 0 plus negative 3t, the quantity squared. So I'll have 9t squared plus 1. And then for my ds, dx dt, the quantity squared plus dy dt, the quantity squared. And actually, maybe before I even wrote down all that stuff, you should have said, wait, you don't need to write all that stuff down because this one is just going to be 0. When I simplify this function here, because the numerator is 0 and the denominator is not, I will have 0 times this number. So this will all be 0. So this integral is adding up 0 all along that curve. And when you add up 0, you get 0. So this line integral is 0. You should look for those shortcuts when they're available and, and use those to your advantage. All right, along C3, uh, we're not going to have quite as nice of a simplification. But uh, along C3, x increases. x goes from 0 to 3. So I'm going to use x equals 3t, and y stays 0. And then I need an interval for my t that will take me from 0, 0 to 3, 0. So my t values will go from 0 to 1 along C3. And so I need to go ahead and do that line integral along C3. So I will integrate from 0 to 1. x is 3t over x squared will be 9t squared plus y squared. That part will be 0 plus 1. And then I need my uh, ds differential. So square root of dx dt squared, so 3 squared, plus dy dt squared, that will be 0 dt. Um, all right, so this one I actually do have to do the integration. I do have some constants I can pull out front. I've got a 3 from here, 
And then when I simplify my square root of 3 squared plus 0 squared, that will just be square root of 9 or 3. So a 3 from that was here in the numerator times this other 3, I'll have a 9 out front times the integral from 0 to 1 of t over 9t squared plus 1 dt. Okay, so you have to do this integration. Hopefully that's not too hard for you to remember how to do that integration. Uh, it's a little u substitution. You'll let u equal this denominator. u equals 9t squared plus 1. Your du would be 18t dt. So you end up with an extra factor of 1 half as part of that integration. Uh, natural log of technically the absolute value, but because that's not ever negative, I can neglect the absolute value. 9t squared plus 1, evaluated from 0 to 1. Putting in our limits of integration, uh, when I put in 1, I'll have 1 half times natural log of 10. And then when I put in 0, I will have 1 half times natural log of 1. Natural log of 1 is 0. So along this part of the curve, I just end up with 1 half times natural log of 10. All right, so to evaluate the line integral we were interested in at the beginning, we're going to just add up these three answers here. So our answer for the line integral we were asked about, I'm going to have 9 tenths plus 0, I don't need to write that, plus 1 half times natural log of 10. That will be my answer for the total value of this function along this entire curve here. All right, so the point of this was thinking about if you have something that's not smooth but is piecewise smooth, just doing that in three separate pieces there, and then also perhaps recalling how to parameterize a circle. That's something that's going to come up a lot in the problems you work on in this chapter. So uh, if you don't remember that, hopefully looking at this example was enough to refresh your memory. Uh, or when you do some homework problems, you'll also get a little bit of refresher on that as well.